Hello. Good afternoon, everybody. I hope you've been well and good. Having a good Tuesday afternoon. So let us begin then. My name is Julian and I'm the sales manager for Swingbee. And today, first and foremost, thank you very much for joining me in this session as I'll be talking you through and giving you some tips on how you can better prepare for after COVID, uh, things that's happened right now. I'm also joined by my team, Wendy and Nicole, who will take your questions and there'll be a short Q&A towards the end of this session as well. So do remember to, if you're on Facebook Live, uh, you can send in your questions right now. And if you're in Zoom, put it in the chat box. Uh, all the descriptions are all down below. Do remember to give a thumbs up, likes, and let's begin. So this whole conversation, I'll be preparing you guys in, in diving deep into some conversations, uh, how you can better prepare your HR, your team, your employees experience for life after MCO in Malaysia and the circuit breaker in Singapore. So yes, aware uh, SMEs now in terms of COVID-19. Just to do a quick recap for those of you who are just joining us and probably missed out, 75% um, of SMEs cited sales and cash flow problems. So if you can see here, this is what affected Malaysians pre and post COVID, one week into COVID especially. But a lot more so we'll be touching on human resources. Um, Malaysian business strategies, uh, as we know, there's a spike and increase in hygiene in practice. Uh, I do not know if you were here, you joined in just now. So this is a very interesting, what do you do when then your colleague, once everybody goes back into office, somebody sneezes, you know? This is where we are all social distancing is now the new norm. How, are, how is HR gonna deal with that? What are the new policies you're gonna bring in place, you're gonna introduce? So these are some of the steps, some of the things that you have to keep in mind once we go back into office. In Malaysia, um, we are due, 28th of April, that's the day everybody is looking forward to. It's been four weeks of MCU and we do not want any more extensions. So yes, this in terms of Malaysia, Singapore. Singapore SME businesses, the optimism hit the lowest with 48.3% since 2009. And among of the many businesses that were affected were manufacturing, um, construction and services. Uh, it's affected everybody, everybody globally as well. Mm. So as you can see here, it's dropped from what it were from 50 to what it is right now. Uh, the global index from Singapore, commerce, construction, manufacturing, retail. This is one that's badly affected and we are all coping with that. Um, Singapore has also with the circuit breaker and everything that has going on right now, uh, morality if it, every employee is, is just at, at, a, at an all time low, I would say, you know? So how do you increase that once you go back to work? How do you send out positivity again, strength to your employees? So what are employee challenges during COVID-19? So this is an interesting survey that was done by uh, VAS.AI. Uh, do have a look at them. So this is challenges uh, employee versus COVID-19 when it comes from working from home. Uh, close to 77% found it challenging to work from home. This is a huge stat for Malaysia, you know. Uh, among of the many troubles, the top three of them were unstable internet connection. 35% of them said that, that they had an unstable, uh, what I'm facing right now as well, <laughs> it's an unstable internet connection as well. It, it, it is, yes, and it is challenging to conduct meetings, to, to have interviews and things like that. Communication, 31%. These are among the top three challenges that were faced by Malaysians in terms of employee. Uh, communication between employees or team members online. Uh, so if you're so used to having face-on-face -face conversations, but now how do you adapt to digitalization? You know, how, how do you conduct a meeting? So, etiquette, those kind of things then come into play. And, and a lot of employees then were questioning HR. Uh, we'll get into that in the next slide. 28% accessing difficulty in accessing data and information. So this again is how mobile is your information. If you still have it in filing cabinets and, and everything is still in black and white and paper, you know, in accessing that information was a challenge. 
Uh, also, 31st of March, how many of you had to go back to the office to run your payroll? Uh, the government did allocate one day for HR managers or, or people who run payroll uh, to go back. So that as well, what we will be addressing. So the whole idea is how you digitize your business and move forward, adapt to the situation. Uh, so earlier we spoke about employee side. So now what are HR challenges? So this is a survey conducted in uh, Asia Pacific. So you can see about 67% of them, uh, HR managers, personnel found it uh, difficult to manage because there wasn't a proper crisis response and a business continuity plan. And this is very important, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, yes, we, we, we could not have seen this coming, but, and, and a lot of what, if some of you who were there for SARS, you know, so that could, some, some of that uh, policies that you had could be an applied plan and things like that. But most of us did not have it. So this was a challenge that a lot of HR faced. 53% uh, found it hard addressing employees' concerns on workplace policy. Yes, policy changes. Uh, whatever that happens in workplace now doesn't apply from working from home. You have to change and adapt. So how do you go about it? What do you do? Uh, so this is where, this is the time right now to sit down and to recap all those challenges, all those struggles you face in terms of HR. HR is always the bridge between management and employee, you know. So do identify that as well. 43 point implementation percent on implementation found it hard uh, to change policies and procedures because again uh, so i'm sales and i do talk to a lot of hr managers i do talk to a lot of people business owners and they're like i've got documents in my office i can't go back roads are cornered off it's blocked uh, i can't remember what's going on what are the policies everybody's asking me so stress level hr managers are, are getting stressed about about that as well so yes 43.4 percent um, only 13.2% had medical coverage. Uh, this inadequate, sorry, adequate, a bulk of them, a majority of them had no medical coverage. So that is something as well to look into. Um, as HR managers or as business owners, if you do provide medical coverage for your employees, uh, how well do you understand it? How well do you know that, you know? A lot of uh, insurance agents have also right now adapted to the COVID situation and introduced new policies. So how do you get the message out there then to your teammates? So are we ready for our new normal after MCO? Well, let's find out. Uh, so HR digitalization can help your business fight through and stay ahead of the pandemic. However, you know, in, in, when we talk about digitalization, there are a lot of terminologies that happens. You know, what is digitization? What is digital, dig, digitalization? See, even I'm struggling to find the word. Uh, then you'll come across words like uh, automation, agile. What are all these words and what do, does it mean? So I'll dive a bit about it. So digitization is the conversation, uh, is the conversion of information from analog to digital. So this is where all your information, your files, your employee database, you know, if you still have it in filing cabinets and everything, it now is the, now is the time to digitize all of that. Whereas digitalization is the adoption, is uh, uh, going into digital technologies. And once your company has successfully achieved both, then you are already on that way to digital transformation. Automation. So automation is identifying current manual processes and procedures and how you can use machines, technologies to get the work done faster, efficient and cost saving. Um, so this is where you evaluate your processes. So now is the time is if an employee were to apply for leave, how long does it take? Uh, your employee would submit a claim, your employee payroll for HR managers, you know, how long does it take you to run your payroll? Manual processes of uh, calculation, balancing your Excel sheet versus uh, any other platforms that you have. It takes time to do that. So this is where now you identify all these processes uh, and things in terms of how you deal with your employee. How has that experience been? And then 
once you have all this identified, what would you like to automate? Now, this can be speak. This is where when you go and look out, when you, when you do product demos, when you go and meet the sales team, present them with your problem. You know, Before that, once you've done the identification, present them and look as to how I want to solve this. I want to automate all this process. No more manual labor. Uh, I want to be efficient, faster, save time, save cost. Thanks. Agile. So agile is a word that you'll hear a lot in the process of going uh, digital as well. Uh, so it's an effective way of working for teams through processes and methodologies. Uh, there's a Kanban board. So if those of you who've never heard about this, um, ideally a Kanban board, it's, it's used a lot for engineering teams. However, in these days, that practice applies to a lot of teams. In Swingbee itself, our business team, our customer success, marketing, sales, and we do apply this agile uh, way of working. There are Kanban boards where it makes your job easier because why? You streamline the process. But I'll dive into that much deeper. So a little bit about who we are. Uh, who Swingby is, what Swingby is. Uh, some of you as well do have uh, pronounced as swing by, you know, swing, swing. Yeah, so we are called Swing V, all right? Our businesses are mainly focused in the Southeast of Asia, Korea. Korea sits our research and development team. Uh, a lot of our platforms, most of it is all, actually all of it is not, are built in-house. Our teams are always there, constantly researching, developing to cater to current market, understanding what the problem is. And then we are in constant development, uh, building new products and things like that. Malaysia, Singapore operations, our front end teams all sit here. Taiwan, we are about to launch in Taiwan as well. And eventually we're going to launch a few other countries as well uh, and introduce more products and things like that. In terms of people, so we are seven cultures across four countries right now. So this is how uh, our CEO, Jin Chue, has, has adopted, um, I'll come into that slide, so. Yes, before I get into that, I'll give you a sneak peek a bit. <laughs> so we connect digitally through Office Exchange Program. Uh, there's a bit of that. Uh, however, we always stay connected via platforms. So this is where I will then speak to you Currently, now you evaluate how was your current system like? What were the challenges like? Okay, if communication is one of it, uh, have you sourced for a platform? You know, um, and then in terms of platform, you always then what is the good one out there? You know, when everybody started working from home, Zoom boomed out, and then everybody were jumping into Zoom. Then there was problems with that. But however, those are you know this is where then you take everything with a pinch of salt. Don't take everything very too literal. So listen, understand, do your research. Google Hangouts is another one which I'll be touching much shortly. Uh, but yes, seven cultures, four countries. We are a multitude of people. We always uh, share things through Slack uh, in terms of our interests. And that's how you build this whole connectivity and culture among your office where people are always open. It's a very lateral and it's fun as well. Autonomy is motivating and motivated uh, and motivated people work better and faster. So this is where we model our people operations and how we work a lot as how Spotify does it. Uh, if you really dive into deep, go and look at how they model their teams and things like that. Um, we have adopted a small portion of it because we feel that it, it does cater to our size and our way of working, and it has proven very effective for us. Even in a time of uh, pandemic and crisis right now, you know, we still stay strong together. We are connected via, here you go. So these are the tools. We are always connected via Slack. Go and do some research on it where Slack enables you can share files, uh, create teams, groups, uh, everything can be done as well. Asana is more of a project management board where it helps you then connect with different teams in your company. So now, right now, if you're facing difficulties in regards to that, take a look into Asana. It's something that uh, many teams can collaborate, cross projects and things like that. Google Hangout, uh, we do use Google Hangout a lot 
on the uh, if you were to subscribe on the corporate package where you can get up to 250 people at one time in a chat group so that is a really good uh, platform to be on it's stable as well uh, zoom as well is another one i know with zoom you can even change your background as well uh, you can be on the beach and things like that trello so trello goes back again to the uh, kanban board that i was talking about so this is where if you want to give it to a try and understand more about things trello will be a good platform to dive into uh, figma is another one as well very similar kanban board where you move your project timelines up that is what will be good to set atlassian jira you can use it for document storage sharing file keeping meeting notes things like that so this is part of the process in going digital in adopting digitalization is understanding all the availability out there so in a lot of these platforms you can either go on a monthly subscription yearly uh, speak to the team there's always demo that's provided speak to the team understand the platform and understand uh, if it applies to your business and and, and things like that uh, especially right now during uh, the pandemic during COVID. so a lot of them are offering um, how do I say this? Uh, offering, I, 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 I won't say discount much, but they, know they, they cater to what you need. So do speak to the team. This is very important. Creating culture. How did you manage your employees' culture to create and build togetherness? Um, what we have done here in Swing Wheel, so we have weekly check-in, check-outs. Uh, I know there are a lot of employees, a lot of management out there. It's like, how do I keep track of my colleagues? You know, how do I ensure that they are working, you know, from nine to five or nine to six? And then they, if it's a one hour break, they only can take that one hour. So this is where now you build trust with your employees. Uh, and what we have done is, so our HR has implemented where we use, since we use Slack, so we have to check in. Uh, we've got a time for between nine to 10 uh, a.m. This is where you check in, you type up. So trust. And whenever you go to Slack, you can set your statuses. You can imagine if, you bring up, if anybody wants to contact you, they will know things like that. You can even set a lunch break away or busy and things like that. Uh, collaboration, communication through video calls. You know, um, we do have a very fun event, which is Friday e-lunches, which I'll share in a bit. Uh, yes, we share interests. So this is how you keep your company culture, togetherness, uh, adaptability is a key word here. Constantly adapting to change. Now, the fact that everybody is remote, this is where HR can start thinking out of the box, create games. If you actually Google uh, work from home during COVID or a simple searches like that for HR, there are hundreds of types of games actually that you can play with your colleagues. So do give that a try. There's actually a lot of games that you can play with your colleagues right now online, be it if they are in the same country or cross country and things like that. Um, one thing we did, so for us culture, food, because again, seven cultures, four countries, different food, where we all gather for lunch. Um, that one hour is just to take your mind off work, stay out of everything and just have fun, you know? These are colleagues that I used to sit beside with, and now it's been four weeks plus that I've never seen them, you know, and we only communicate like that. So taking that one hour time off does create an impact in your business in terms of especially, yeah, we had our colleagues dancing, uh, sharing food, what we eat, especially uh, Korean, a lot of them South Korean, so that was good. Um, all right. So, is it too late to transform your business now into a digital and data-driven company? No, it is never, never, never too late. You are not alone in this race. So there's always a fear. There's always a fear, you know, gosh, this has happened already. What now? Now do I jump on the bandwagon now? Or do I wait? There's never a right time. You know, there's never a right time. You'll never know. But I hope that in terms of this crisis has actually given you insights especially in your processes, your policies, your procedures, you know, uh, looking more so into HR as well. It's time to make the switch. If you find that there's been a lot of redundancy, there's been a lot of uh, back of processes that's too long, start streamlining it, start cutting it down. Uh, do also do research on software platforms, HR platforms, or what they can offer you, you know. 
the, like I said earlier, the whole process of going digital is also being adaptive. You know, if this doesn't work, then adapt. The team, the sales team should be able to solve your problem and offer you the solution. Uh, yes, these platforms, our platform as well, we do offer. So where you can put your employee information, everything is housed under one platform. There's no longer flipping piles of paper to look for uh, an employee's uh, information. There's no longer need to switch into different systems and things like that. So when you do your research and when you go out there, so the whole part of going agile, going digital, this is where speak to them, plan out your processes, understand that, and then bring it forward. Yes, so for those of you who have actually seen our platform, have run through it, this is a little snippet of what we have as well, which is called talent, where you can uh, set goals for your employees as a manager, you know, and review it either weekly, monthly, uh, quarterly, and things like that. Uh, but do speak to our agents as well. They'll definitely guide you on this. So HRIS, a little bit more, I'll be diving a bit more about what Swingbee is, the platform, what we have to offer, uh, touching a bit on that. So HRIS is the main hub where you can get your news announcement, employee directory, organizational chart. Uh, ideally, our platform, we've kept, it, we've kept it open. And that's what happens in most uh, HR as well, HR softwares as well, cloud-based softwares, where it's open and then you come in and you configure it, change it to fit your business needs and solutions. Leaf, um, so we also have a mobile app with Swingly, uh, which is compatible for Android and Apple as well. Uh, you can always download it on the um, the Apple Store or the Google Play Store. So leave on an employee's perspective, they can apply leave either via the website using the uh, logging into Swingly, or they can just go into the mobile and quickly apply leave. You as a manager, you can also apply, uh, approve or decline the leave via mobile uh, using email as well, or you can even do it from the system. So yeah, speak. That's something we have claims as well via mobile or via submit your claims via mobile, just snap a picture and upload it, create a report and things like that. So yes, if you wanna find out about all this and how we can help your businesses, uh, especially if you've got a huge sales team that's constantly uh, across country or things like that, yes, you know, this comes in handy because no longer do you need to put an A4 paper and then stick all your receipts like that. So this solves all that issues for you. Payroll, yes, one very key feature or something that a lot of people are, are, are for. So again, going back, 31st of March, how many of you did actually go back to your office uh, in the needs to run your payroll? This is where right now adopting digital platforms will really, really help you. Second question you should ask, how long does it take you to run your payroll? In Swingby, it's a very easy three-step process. Once all your information is there, running payroll every end of the month is no longer a headache. But rather, HR managers look forward to it, actually. <laughs> do we have a mobile app? Yes, we do have a mobile app. A lot of you were asking this, especially when my colleague did a, a webinar yesterday as well for Singapore. Uh, we do have a mobile app. We are in constant development and improving and changes. So in terms of our product, it's not just what it's not what you see now what you're going to get forever we are constantly developing new products new modules new things are coming up you know but yes book a demo session with our team and you'll find out a lot more about us help your businesses by making work life more enjoyable uh, and easier with digitalization so in short digitalization don't be afraid don't be afraid to embrace it yes it, it you might be wondering, where do I start? How do I go about it? Uh, this is where you have to first identify your processes. What is, um, in terms of your process, identify the current structure of it. Reflect it against what happened the minute you had to work from home. How long did it take you to go, uh, to go mobile, to go mobile, to go remote? So these are the processes you identify. Then next step is then you have to then begin to, how can you simplify it? What are you trying to solve? What are you trying to automate? 
then go on Google, do a research. There are a lot of companies, they offer demo, listen to all their demo presentation, fall in love with the product, with the brand, because this is something you're buying into and you're changing. So yeah, do that. At Swingbee, something that we are doing, we are helping our businesses out there, where we are offering six months free from our full suite package. Um, so this comes with leave, payrolls, claims, mobile, everything is in it. Six months in the hope that businesses that are out there that, that's facing uh, a struggling time right now, you know, and because and, you, besides managing your employees now, you've also got to figure out how to adopt the system and things like that. So this is where we come in. We try to take the burden off you and offer you six months free, speak to our agents. You get always an account manager that's always been with you. There's no other hidden costs. We only charge you for the um, uh, number of employees that you bring on board into our platform. Uh, you can always drop in an email to our support team as well. They were glad to help you. Or look up at our website, which is swingbee.com. Uh, do browse our help center as well, just to give you an idea as to what the platform is and things like that. By booking a demo session will be the best. We do provide training, guidance support. Uh, yes, like I said, very prompt house customer success team to assist you there during work hours. And an account manager for your company as well. So you are taken care at every step of the way when you are with us at Swing Week. That's it on my end. Um, my colleagues are there and please feel free to ask questions uh, on Slido. I'll be more than happy to answer them. My team is also there. Hi, Julian. Um, we have a question from Adil. Um, he asks, how to encourage people to change to the better than their current comfort zone. You uh, need some okay. ideas to shake some people off their bait. <laughs> uh, yes, thank you. Thank you so much, Adil, for the question. Yes, change is something that we all, uh, uh, it, it's always getting that initial kick out of them. Uh, but how to encourage, well, for, in terms of your employees, I think it's first showing them when change is always, um, that, okay, first and foremost, when you talk about digitalization change, you know, because like I said earlier, it's going to help you save time, save money, save cost. So if they are very skeptical about change in terms of this, this, this thing, show them what this change can do, how you can simplify your work, make it easy for you. You know, if now you're struggling with, with, with tons of paperwork, a load of work, then show them what the, the processes uh, digitalization can do. You know, it's always painting that different picture for them that they don't understand. Give them the different perspective that they don't see. And you'd be surprised. they will jump on board just like that. Any more questions? Yes, we do. Uh, we have a very technical question, actually. Um, how can, how can uh, Cheris, the, the lady that's asking, identify which processes that they can automate? Which process is, okay, this is where then you do a deep dive back. Uh, thank, first and foremost, thank you, Cheris. Uh, do a deep dive first. First and foremost, look at your HR. HR matters a lot because, uh, so HR, you are the bridge between the management, between um, employee. So in terms of that, now figure out during COVID, when you first had to work from home, what were your challenges? In terms of uh, employee engagement, look, break it all down to even the very minor thing. Uh, take, for example, transportation. You know, how many of them struggle with that? How many of them struggle applying leave, questioning your policies and things like that? You know, break everything down. Begin with HR, begin with that employee experience. Once you change that, you know, and then everything else you can start beginning to move. Because this matters, because once we go back into office life again, after four weeks, uh, that is the first question in everybody's mind is your employees. How do you take care of them? You know, four weeks at home and now suddenly everybody is like stepping out, you know. So look into that first. That should be one of your processes. That should be in terms of uh, making sure that they have a pleasant journey with you from this point onwards. Yeah. Any others? One last from the live. Um... An anonymous attendee says, uh, you know, we did not really cover um, how are they going to prepare for them uh, to go back to work, the process of going back to work and going back to the office. Um, 
and how can they pre better prepare their employees? Any suggestions? Okay, so better preparing your employees. Um, okay, what are the challenges then you're facing right now with your employees? So this is one question first, identification, all right? Analyzing identification, what are the problems you're facing with them? Uh, if it's emotional problems, okay, then check. So in terms of company, what is your structure like? If you're facing emotional problems, yes, a lot of them do right now because work from home is not an easy process. So as a HR manager, this is where your practice then comes uh, into fruition. Whatever you've learned uh, in terms of emotional management, it's time to look into your employee welfare. What are the kind of welfares that you provided pre-COVID versus right now? Because why things are going to change. So look into your welfare. Look into emotional support for your employees. Uh, some of them might require, because why it's an additional burden right now, if a spouse or anybody else is not working and things like that. So look into emotional support, look into welfare. Uh, again, processes as well. Um, applying leave, you know, it's now a time to probably introduce different kinds of leave policies. So look into those policies that you have in terms of leave and, and update them. Besides also updating them, it's also about then making it accessible for your employees. If right now your employee needs to apply for a leave and, and you know, emergency leave, how difficult it is. You know, this is where when you adopt digitalization, it makes it easier because why? They can view all your policies, they can view uh, your company structure, everything is outlaid, especially with Swingly, what we do, we have kept our leave platform very much open that you can create as many policies as you want and decide even who gets, uh, who assign it to people, how it's going to run, and you can always constantly change these policies. Our claims as well, we've kept it open where you can just keep adding the types of claims. So as a HR, this makes your job very much easier in planning as well. Okay, fine, now we're going back to work. Uh, now you can claim for, let's say you're introducing a new claim module, all right? So it's easy because why on our platform, you can decide uh, the name, how you want to go about it, setting a condition, things like that. So this helps you in that process as well. Uh, payroll, how long does it take you right now to give payroll out to your employees? You know, do you struggle? Does your employees uh, struggle with that as well? So breaking everything down in terms of uh, employee experience, HR as well, you know, that HR experience within your team as well, break that down as well. Yeah. Any others? Well, this is more of non uh, non HR question. Um, how service company they are providing services to B two B better manage their sales during COVID? This is really a sales the uh, question. So mm -hmm. maybe you could help answer. Uh, just to reset, how can better B two B manage sales? Is it B two B companies? So so we there is a B there is a service company that uh, only provides services to B two B companies. So, and they're asking uh, how can they be manage or better manage their sales during this COVID period? Um, more so, I heard it feels like how can they increase their sales or maintain their sales during this COVID period? What can be done? Ah, okay, okay. So, when you're talking about sales B2B, this is where, um, think outside the box. All right, a lot of, uh, there are a lot of uh, new platforms that have, uh, besides new platforms, existing platforms where you can go on what we do as well. Um, there is a platform where you can now prepare video, do video presentations. So with B2B, there's also, you lose out on that physical connection, but how do you still build that physical connection? One thing is through video, the power of video um, if you find your sales very stagnant and you find it hard to reach them via email, yes. Although people are at home right now and, and they, they do have a lot more free time to access emails, but still email, it's, it's, it's very hard getting that message across. So this is the time where you start going video. Use your laptop, you know, record your message, show them what your sales is all about. Think outside the box, be innovative in that sense. And then send these messages out. So either send it via your email, uh, uh, put it out in a blog, start doing blogs. People now, in the, in, when going digital, it's all about using the platforms that's available. There's so many uh, tools, especially when you want to record yourself, start a YouTube channel, YouTube, 
not more so just to gain popularity, but more so in sending out awareness to your targeted audience, to your customers. Uh, if you're afraid of being in front of the camera and things like that, then write a blog, put it out. Uh, besides that, this is also a time where if you want to increase B2B sales, it's also your personality that you build digitally. Digital platforms, social media like LinkedIn, um, what else you have? You've got LinkedIn, your Instagram, you know. Create a business account and learn the art of selling digitally then. And things like that. That really will help with your B2B. One thing I believe is that power, like how I'm speaking to you right now, you know, that connectivity, that connectedness that you can feel then, you know, that means that I've reached out to you here. So yes, that, that's my suggestion and that's what I would go about. Uh, still keep the questions coming in via Slido. Uh, do keep on asking, my team is there, we will still be answering it. Uh, do give us, give, give us a shout out and on, on our social media platforms as well. Uh, so join us. We will still have another webinar that's coming up talking more about statutory and uh, payroll. So for those of you who really want to dive in deep in terms of uh, changes in government regulations and things like that, uh, do join in for tomorrow's webinar. Uh, Nicole is our in-house payroll expert and uh, he'll be able to, uh, he inside more than giving you enlightenment, he can also take in a, a questions that you've got your burning questions. Uh, but um, yeah, yes. Wendy. Julian, we have one interesting uh, um, attendee, David. David asked if you could share a little bit more about Swing V. Okay. So in terms of Swing V, what would you and like? And what we have to offer. And what we have to offer. Okay. So what we offer is an all-in-one HR solutions platform. It's a cloud-based platform. So what is a cloud platform? So this is where information, your data, everything is stored, uh, is stored uh, in a cloud. So there's no need for a physical maintenance of a server and things like that. So if you're a company that's currently have all that, uh, this is what we offer where agility, mobility. So as a HR manager, you do not need to run your payroll at your office. Your payroll can run, if you were to come about our platform, you can run your payroll anywhere, anytime. You can uh, even approve your leaves and claims. So that's what we sell. What Swingway is, it's all about giving you freedom, automating your processes, bringing it all about, streamlining it, making it clear. We currently offer leave, payroll, claims. We also have benefits. We do have our insurance expert. So if you also want to offer insurance to your team, uh, but you do not know how to go about it, and understand the whole insurance industry, Speak to our team members. They'll be able to guide you and to teach you. You can do, even do an instant quote uh, for insurance in our platform as well. We do have a lot more modules coming up, but for that, you will need to then book a session with our sales team. But for now, we offer an all-in-one solution. So if you're struggling with your payroll, if you're, if, if you're struggling with leave, you know, claims, employee database, keeping all that housing right now, everything is in paperwork right now. Uh, you need reports, reportings. This is what we offer. We offer you that solution. But then again, you will have to speak to our sales team because why? We need to understand your problem as well. So before we can offer you the solution, we need to understand what are you facing. So that's where it goes back, ties back again to what I said previously, is where you've got to identify what is currently your challenge. Once you identify your challenge in your processes, your procedures, that's when then you bring it out to us. And please do bring it to us. We are more than glad. Uh, you might even get me. And I'm more than glad to listen to your problems and actually solve it for you. Our sales team here, that's what we love doing. We love solving your HR administrative task. And yes, speak to us. And we'll be more than happy to solve it for you. Anything else? So more questions are coming, Julian. Um, <laughs> How to apply autonomy for business that has staff off-site and as well as staff uh, do, during working office jobs. So they have off-site staff and office workers as well. So how to apply the autonomy for their staff? Okay. In this sense, when you say off-site, um, do you mean that they're traveling constantly 
or are they overseas, things like that. Autonomy as well goes in hand with trust. Uh, again, our platform, you know, we are soon, it will be introducing where it's um, multi-country, multi-company. So where you can then run your platforms uh, across this whole different, uh, like what you're saying, autonomy. Now, what are your challenges then in terms of autonomy? Uh, is it because in terms of they're not uh, clocking in, clocking out, or they're not submitting claims, they're not following your company's procedures, you know? If those are your issues, those are your problems, then speak to us. We, we do have the solution for you in that, you know? Uh, you're finding that they are, they're not disciplined enough in doing all this, you know? That, that they're not keeping to a schedule, then yes, we can actually offer you solutions in terms of that. Uh, in, in autonomy. Anything else? Uh, one more question from Chi Kyung. Uh, what's the transition period like for companies that use so many different, different apps? Um, and Swingly, like ourselves, we also use many apps. How did we prepare and adapt? Uh, and how are we going to prepare and adapt to go back to our office? Okay. Yes. Good question. Uh, so how do you prepare? First begin with communication. Communication is key. So um, currently in your office, how, do, how does management deal with, uh, communicate to your employees? You know, look into that. If currently it's a very manual process that you literally go down, then look for a communication tool that solves that problem first. For us, Slack was one thing that solved our issues because why not only can I communicate with my colleagues in the same country, I can also communicate with my colleagues cross country as well. I can share files with them, uh, things like that. So communication is key. Next thing is, um, then you look into, again, going back, payroll, leave, claims. So begin with communication, because that is key. Then move into the employee experience, the employee journey part, be it their onboarding process or when they join your company, look into employee experience as well a lot more because why that matters, they are the bulk of your workforce as well. In terms of your management then, how do you communicate as well? Look into that. Uh, sharing of information, that's another thing as well you gotta look into. Currently, if you need to pass a document, files, is it done very manually? Then look for the platform. This is also what we did, we realized that. So we do conduct a town hall meeting and it's done via Google Hangout. You know, that we've always done that from the start. So if now you're finding it, how do I, how do I have a huge team meeting and town hall and things like that? Do it via Google Hangout. Yeah. This is where you start. Yes, it will be challenging at first, you know, connection issues, trying to understand. But as you go along, they say practice makes perfect. So that is also something. Information, sharing of information, passing of information. How is that done? Between your management, between management and employees. You know, then find a tool for that. What we use, Alasia is one thing that we use. Uh, so our CEO puts out a lot of notes, uh, things like that. You can also gives you a history of who has viewed it. So the minute you put that out, you know, on the back end, you can get statistics. So that will help. Because when you're putting out notification notices, how sure are you, your employees reading that? How sure are you, people are actually grabbing that? Use tools like this. Uh, yes, like what I've shown you earlier, look into all those Project management, asana is one thing. How does team A give the project to team B, make sure team B is notified to team C, it goes here, it goes there. Asana comes in handy with that. It's all about tagging and things like that. That's how we stay connected. Uh, backend team introduces a new product, tags it on Asana, tags the customer success team, customer success team updates the information, customer success team tags uh, marketing, Marketing prepares all the collateral, then we tag sales, sales is updated. So everything can be done just like that. So the tools that I shared with you earlier is very important. Uh, it's what we've done to stay uh, productive, to stay still, to fight against COVID. So look into those tools that I've shared actually. Uh, if you're looking for these kind of solutions, this is where you begin um, in terms of your information, structure, communication, project management. Anything else? Thank you, Julian. Yes. One last question that we'll take from the floor um, is from Chelsea. Uh, before we end today's session, um, how does SwingV help my company through my retail business? What functions can I use? 
put your sales hat on, Julian. This is a good sales question. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Chelsea, right? Um, okay, you're in a retail business, all right? Now your challenges is, in terms of retail, is making an outreach over there, uh, sales. So first and foremost, I guess, it's how you're changing your marketing strategy as well. Swingbee comes in because why? Managing your, your payroll, okay? You probably, now you do not, if you're stuffed, everything, uh, please, previously you have a physical shop. Uh, it depends again, were you physical or were you com constantly online? If you had a physical retail shop, and now when everybody is remote, then how do you manage your payroll right now? How do you go about paying your staff previously? So Swingbee comes in and can help you in terms of payroll. In terms of employing, uh, managing your employee database, you know, uh, we can do that as well for you. Employees got different shifts, different hours, different working styles. Not everybody's working Monday to Friday, nine to five, you know, that can be done as well. We can help that. In terms of regulations, staying updated uh, with statutory requirements, for in Malaysia, EPF, uh, Singapore will be your CPF, you know, we do constantly stay updated in that. And we do give you uh, notifications, be it on the platform or via email. So see, we can help businesses, especially retail businesses, in still staying alive by managing your backend task for you, you know, your leave, your receipts, claims, things like that. How do you all now incorporate it, bring it online? This is how then we can then uh, work that solution. And, and basically give, an, give you an insight. So do, do speak to our team, do really speak to our team. Because uh, at retail as well, it, it encompasses a lot of other aspects as well. So we will have to actually then look into how you're doing it right now, and then what are you trying to solve? What are the issues, uh, the, those administrative tasks that you're really finding it difficult uh, reaching out to, connecting? Yes, we'll definitely be, be we would love to listen to you. Thank you very much, Julian. Thank you for the great webinar. Um, <laughs> thank you, thank I you thank, so much. I have to thank all the attendees as well for all the great questions. There are some questions that we couldn't answer at this point in time because of time issue, but we'll definitely get back to you on the questions that you asked. Should you leave a name and an email uh, on the questions? Yes, um, email one last thing. Well. Julian, let's share about our next webinar session. Uh, like I said again, Nicole, our in-house payroll expert, We'll be talking about statutory requirements, changes, all these recent updates that has been going up. Uh, again, where do you start? What do you begin? What's going on? So this is all in preparation for now and what's going to happen post-COVID. How do you deal with these changes? Uh, EPF, if for most of those of you who are actually conducting payroll, you will know that EPF in Malaysia right now, from 11%, 11% has been brought down to 7%. So in Swingwee, we can also make that adjustment. We've actually done it already. And how, if your employees still want to maintain 11%, you know? But if you really want to dive in deeper, like I said again, <clears throat> book a demo session because we want to understand your current problems and solve it for you always. Uh, also, as uh, Ramadan is coming towards the end of this week, I would like to take this opportunity and wish all Muslim people out there, uh, Ramadan Mubarak, on behalf of all of us here in Swingwee, Thank you very much, everybody. Goodbye, and have a great week ahead. Sing me.